everyone, and welcome to the Jeff Bullish Show. Today I have with me Tony Greenberg. And I do love Tony's background there. It looks like from a Harry Potter movie. Um, looks like a man cave, but it's um, really cool. So a little bit about Tony. He's the founder and CEO of Ramp Rate. Um, he helps Fortune 500 startups looking to make a purpose-driven impact in the world while simultaneously addressing how to integrate AI, metaverse, blockchain, edge computing, and other emerging innovation in the business. And to realize the potential of today's innovation and impact since 2000, Ramp Rate has worked with hundreds of world-renowned organisations, Microsoft, Sony, eBay, Merrill Lynch, and more, and new companies in emerging markets alike to achieve and succeed in their business goals. Ramp Rate's vision is to build an ecosystem of impactpreneurs and trailblazers powered by opportunities, resource, innovation, and human spirit. Today, Tony's ability to recognise and stay at the forefront of emerging business trends has been his key to ramp rate success. So welcome to the show, Tony. It's an absolute pleasure to have you here. And we're going to talk a little bit about your take on the capitalist system that you are basically um, involved with and business that is in a very holistic way, which we just talked about, the purpose-driven impact that uh, ramp rate does. We find it where you want. So Tony, you um, after you, you went and did a degree, and then after that, um, how did you get into being an entrepreneur first, and then you became a risk reductionist next? So how did you become an entrepreneur? What drove that? Well, first of all, if you talk about the degree I got, I only gave the third degree. I never, and I got the third degree, but I never really got a degree. You know, okay. <laughs> I did my temperature taken once in a variety of places. Mom did a good job of making sure that I didn't have too much problems up there in the head. But uh, the degree, uh, I'm actually a uh, PhD uh, in art, uh, con art or con artistry. So my <laughs> my my real business is sales, uh, which is in its essence is enabling decisions. People like to turn it into something else, manipulating, spinning, getting people to lead, getting people to buy. That's got nothing to do with selling. Selling is simply enabling decisions. Mm -hmm. And if you take a look at that, and in the words of Jeff Pink, who did a wonderful uh, TED talk, where everybody's a salesperson, the minute we say, oh, we don't like that, or we don't like it, we're not like that, or we're embarrassed, there's nothing more honorable than carrying a bag. So whether I was selling mobile homes when I was a kid or timeshare condos, or I've done through the restructuring of multi-billion dollar deals and driven strategies for multi-billion dollar acquisitions by Microsoft and, and eBay and PayPal and you know all sorts of in-between, everything is selling. Mm -hmm. So when we wave in the day, and we really want to get our stuff going. We figure out how to communicate our ideas, yeah. how to enable decisions of others around us so that we can flow in the universe and be here to be of service to each other. Yeah. I like the word flow that you just used right then. Um, and uh, in terms of sales, I totally agree with you. I left teaching to become a salesperson. So I've been facilitating decisions for quite a long time. And it's... Um, yeah. Enabling, not facilitating. Facilitating okay. is proactive. Enabling is it is allowing natural revenue and natural decisions to be made. So it's enabling flow. Okay, cool. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I I reflect on my life and I sometimes I think about um when the bad things happen, it was where I was trying to force things. The good things happen where I just let it flow and um uh, I'd be interested in your take on that. Actually, let's 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 talk about flow because you use that word, and obviously it's important to you. So enabling flow. So what do you mean by flow? Uh, flow is of the river, right? I'm not a salmon. I'm not going to fight uphill. Uh, in Taoist tradition, I, yes. I you know was born a Jew, but I had to go study over the world's religion to see what I wanted to decide on. Decide more, you know, Taoist, and that's really of the river of the flow you know, find the current and go beyond it. If you, It's called drafting on a bike. Yep. Now, yep. Uh, join the peloton. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, so so if we, we talk about flow, uh, first of all, it's, it's easy, much more easy to talk about than to do, right? Yes. And the discipline 
uh, going where the puck is headed, as per will, uh, is not just fighting and creating your discipline. I mean, breaking every rule in the book is everything I've ever done. I don't know anything else than that. But there's a lot of ways to allow uh, truth and value to be create to be created. So mm-hmm. when we talk about cre- creating value, I really talk about not deciding, you know, in a management philosophy book that may say, are you uh, more customer to mid lowest cost manufacturer or most innovative? I think what we're talking about is how you can participate in the greater benefiting of all things from your ecosystem to your team, to yourself and to the universe and to human rights as a whole. And so once we hit that beautiful balance, they call it a syzygy, which is the name of my foundation, S-Y-Z-Y-G-Y, you'll never remember it. But syzygy was a very, very important, wonderful word that, uh, I went and looked it up and I wanted to get it because the alignment of the celestial bodies, Jeff, the earth, the moon, the sun. And I was just fascinated with this, how cool this word was. And I looked it up and uh, funny as it may, a friend of mine, uh, the ever impressionable, always minimal, amazing, beautiful man named Nolan Bushnell, the creator of Atari and Chuck E. Chuck e. Cheese and things of that nature, had registered the name inside of uh, the trademark and then it had lapsed and I somehow took it over. Well, I said, Nolan, you really got to, we got to, you got to know what's behind this. The guy that made Atari and Chuck E. Cheese, I want to know why you called this Syzygy. And uh, hey, Nolan, I get to tell this story. So he says, well, Tony, I said, I think you're going to have to, we're going to have to go out to dinner for this. And we're going to go to the, uh, uh, you know, that, that, that mess galleria, Oaxacan restaurant you've been talking about, and we can have a serious conversation. So I got all my generals out there. We went in there, and then Nolan came in there, and we had done it. We had two, three margaritas, and the Mezcal's margaritas, and eventually says, Nolan, we need to know the taxonomy, the nomenclature, how the word came about, how this became the name of your first company, in or about the time that Steve Jobs was working for you. He said, I was in Palo Alto. I was right. sitting around with my friends. We were deciding what to call the company, being very serious. Right. So we pulled out a huge joint and smoked <laughs> it. And we said, I wonder what the F, the last word in the S's is in the dictionary. <laughs> and I said, I had to buy you dinner to get that? <laughs> uh, but in that state, where there's the earth, the moon, the sun that's aligning. It's not an eclipse. It's actually true value. Like it's it's just alignment. And so aligning with your ecosystem, and I like to do it in threes, uh, allows unconditional value to come out. And if I learned that a long time ago, I'd probably be even doing better today, but I'm, I'm doing okay. So, yeah, alignment. Alignment. Okay, so let's uh, wind back. So what – you're still a salesperson that enables uh, decisions to be made. Um, what was your first entrepreneurial adventure and how did that start? What was the inspiration? You know, so I don't have to talk about it too much. You can look up Tony. Tony Greenberg, Virtual Soul India. I got a crazy blog at TonyGreenberg.com if you really want to go. Is he for real? Uh, and I worked for a an Indian gentleman who allowed me to borrow colored stones, and I pedal them around my bike in Minnesota, and and sold them to people. And uh, then eventually, I somehow became, uh, you know, a dealer of vintage eyeglasses. And then I um, built a chain of eyeglass stores of the super super boutique type. Right. And I sold them at age 28. Uh, wonderful, wonderful stores. We had a company called Custom Color Gallery where we added wood, leather, paint, rhinestones, custom colors, and plating to strange eyewears and did every celebrity under the sun, including like all of Prince's bands and all their people's stuff and sent stuff to Elton John and did everything else. And it was super fun. And I got rid of that in 28. And I moved to Aspen, Colorado. Took a couple of years off. This thing named Internet was started. And... Uh, joined uh, an amazing group of Indian entrepreneurs and we built something 
and called even at data centers or co-location and uh, continue to change my stripes and be involved in compute industry for many years. Yeah. And then so they moved into where they make computers, which is blockchain and where they make, you know, these bitcoins, you know, they, they, they make them in computers. Right. Yeah. Uh, and uh, then I started seeing how decentralization uh, could affect the world and studied a lot of um, decentralized governance and been hooked on uh, breaking up hierarchies and bad stuff and working on impact mission and driven businesses and helping them bring value and seeming some of those businesses together with, you know, my fortune 500 chiefs. <laughs> it's the short story. Cool. So you've had a very eclectic business background. Um, Are you telling me I can't keep a job? <laughs> well, I think you may be uh, not horrible very easily. <laughs> okay. Um which I sort of very, very closely identified to. I see my partner go after work. She works in a corporate law and I sit at home and sort of play and work um, online. Been doing it for 13 years. I'm unhorrible as well. So it's, uh, I think it's a value to be embraced. Um, yeah. So we, we need more vagabonds that actually roam the earth and uh, take a path less traveled as they say. So um <laughs> It sounds like you've been a little bit like uh, the Knights of the Holy Grail where they struck, went into the forest where there was no path, which sounds like very much what you've done. Um, you've, you've, you've created your own path, which is, I think, being true to you, which is fabulous. I think I've had this unerring belief system that if any given time that you ask me a question and the answer is no, you've asked the wrong question. <laughs> And I guess in, in format to that, I may also say that when my friends say, Tony, you are the most driven man I've ever met in my entire life. And I always say, I have no idea where I'm driving. And they <laughs> say, only one thing worse than a moron, but a driven moron. And so here I am attempting to save the universe in a haphazard way, having some fun and doing some good work. Yeah, which sounds very much like you, what you've done. And uh, in Australia, we might also call it keeping the bastards honest. Um, so, uh, which means, uh, I suppose, trying to find the real purpose behind what you do as a business as well as an individual. Now, can we tell, tell us a bit more, like you use the word impact a lot. So um, purpose-driven impact businesses or making sure that, can you explain more about impact? What you meant? What's meant by that in your terms? Well, you know, I wish I had a more articulate answer. There's many, many different ways to measure the impact outcomes or the benefit to society, or to the members of a constituency, an ecosystem, or shareholders. And I've gone about my merry way trying to figure out how to create an extensible index to measure the benefits or the impacts. Yes. Of particular situations uh, i even went as far as to go crazy and become something called b lab certified which is like you know if you were like patagonia or whole foods or ben and jerry's and you like really cared more about the world than you did about yourself and your checkbook uh you'd become one of these b lab certified companies so i'm an elite member of four thousand companies out of a hundred thousand people companies in the world that have tried that are actually doing great work, measuring what we're doing and reporting what we're doing. So impact and impact ROI can be measured across a variety of disciplines. When people say, I'm impactful in the world or I'm charity driven or I'm this or that, it's like, okay, yeah. tell me how, tell yeah. me what that looks like. And is your ROI around the definition of what you're going to do? Is it the investment rate of return as per created by Warren Buffett's nephew, Howard, is the impact rate of return based on, you know, a calculation of benefit against investment? Is it uh, a corporate social responsibility about how you run your business and how you manage your staff and your team and your philanthropic management and your equalities? Or is it about what is the materiality or benefit 
to the people you serve, right? All these have different measurements. So I've sort of like put them into a soup and next year in the beginning of the first Q1, we'll be releasing this extensible impact measurement so that people can actually know what they've done, know where they've invested, know what they've performed. And then one of my companies that I co-fund with Dr. Wolf Call, which is called Menagerie, the wilding up of round animals at menagerie.is, we built uh, a decentralized community software uh, to turn your passion into pay and to start shifting the way corporate psychopaths can start putting the power in the hands of the people that matter. So between B Corp certified and building decentralized governance software, which is kind of DAO-esque, decentralized autonomous organization, uh, my life is around making sure that benefit gets as equally to shareholders, employees, and to the environment, and to human rights. So I haven't heard the term for B certified company. What does B mean? Yeah. So what? Uh, B Labs. Uh, so you know, without going too deep into it, yep. I would just go to B Labs, uh, B Labs certification. Use the keyword and learn about that. It's at benefitcorporation.net. Let's not. So, be so ben B means benefit. Yeah, it means benefit. Yeah. Okay. And you learn about B Corp certification, which is very different than benefit corps. It's unfortunate they use the same word with a lot of difficulties. But if you sort of take a look at the discipline under which that we create value in our ecosystem, that's, uh, you know, what I'm kind of down with and spend a lot of time on it for a few years. All so right, cool. that's as much as I can go into impact today. Um, but uh, we're mission aligned. If somebody wants to know about us, I like to say go to rampart.com slash values and discusses and articulates how we operate our business to who and why and to what benefit. And once you start defining all those, the characteristics of your business really start to change and shift and uh, your whole persona and how your company operates starts to shift. I've been cool. in that world for about four years. Okay. So tell us a little bit more about the values of ramp rate. Can you, is it a long list? Is it a short list? I mean, it's, it's too long, right? But uh, if you do ramp rate.com slash values, uh, you know, I look at it every day. It's important to, to say that, you know, as you mentioned, we build an ecosystem of impactpreneurs and trailblazers powered by opportunities resources, innovation, and we serve others. We choose who we work with. We deal in rationality and pragmatism. We dream big. We support execution. We earn trust. We over-deliver on our promises. We support diversity, equity, and inclusion. We're engines of transparency. We believe in the transformational power of tech and innovation. Not all that new is better. Rigorous evaluation and audit of every new technology, tokenomics of new tokens, and real health effects of every new therapy. We embrace personalization. We're bold. We accelerate or do growth strategy and implementation for earlier stage companies, finding them, vetting them, optimizing them. We do general boutique business planning and consultancy. We do social impact consulting, not just, you know, how do you buy carbon credits, but what is the real strategic sustainability and the nine financial reporting of outcome measurement? How do you manage your supply chain? How do we manage deep expertise on industry spaces, maintain a profound broad network of sector leading experts? Why? Because we have a moral obligation. We have an awareness of the changing landscape because it's our DNA. Because with tech recreates and enables an environment for high impact projects. And the industry, we use it for the industries that need it most, the dirtiest industries, the corporate managers, the budget savings, the people who want to live their values at work, period. Dreamers. Dreamers. <laughs> That's a big list. Um, so how do you position the company? Like if you're basically enabling decisions when you are talking to corporations, how do you describe in a sentence what you do? Well, what we do is say, tell me more. The three most powerful, potent words in the English language. Mm -hmm. Because 
when companies come to us and they say, well, we are really just trying to raise money. Right. No, you're not. You're maybe failing to raise money <laughs> or failing to attract capital or failing to be relevant or failing to recognize your position in the marketplace. You're probably failing to understand your unique selling proposition. Yeah. You are probably doing everything, you know, you're saying, you know, uh, unfortunately, I, you know, went to the bathroom on the floor. No, you just didn't wear diapers. Okay. Tell me about the root cause. And then we talk about why you can't manage this. I'm being absurd. But the point is, everybody always talks about what they think they need or what they want. Whether it's Microsoft wanting to grow into content, or whether it's Sony wanted to move digital, or whether it's McKinsey wanted to figure out how to deliver infrastructure, or whether a data center company wanted to be energy as impact. Uh, you know, all of these people, they generally come to us with their problems. And we say, those are not your problems. Those are your solutions. And then we say, tell me more. Right. And then we say, show me your 10 magic tricks, the 10 things that you think I could do that would allow you to be successful, prosper, be innovative and uh, flourish and be in flow. And they go, well, you know, we want to talk to any company that does this. No, no. Which company? Why? What did you studied about them why are you telling me that they're a target of yours how have you made it easy for them to say yes well we just think i don't care what you think neither do they there's an articulate answer about why someone will have a natural flow and a natural integration to buy things from you and make you happy because you're delivering something to them that they need not what you think they need so we really drill down to the core of a company, whether it's large or small, and not figure out what they think their problem is. We get them to know that that's their solution. And then we reverse backwards and we build the ecosystem. We build the advisors. We build the structure. We build the unique selling proposition. We make their business plan pragmatic. We teach them to have an alpha customer versus building that they'll come. And then in turn, when they're ready and they've been ready to leave the nest, then we'll build a wonderful group of advisors that will shepherd them through the world and participate, not be names on a bus, on a website, or a deck. And then we'll help drive the value that they get together and they want to report, right? And at any given time that they don't want to do an impact statement or impact measurement, in any given time, they want to do it their way and they just say, no, we just need some introductions. We say, have a nice day because you're not going to be entering mine. So our role is to find companies that are super, super curious about where they're headed or where they want to go. And they're willing to do the work to change their stripes and to feel beneficial to the rest of the universe by defining their impact mission, figuring out what their product and services are, how and to who they're benefiting them, and how we can knock it out of the park and make enough money so where our philanthropic uh, goals are met also. Right. So, and we get to say no to most of the companies, but when they do say yes. Uh, it's just a beautiful natural fit. I had one today that just we tried to get them out of there, and they eventually we had no choice but to say yes. They were mission aligned, right? They knew what they were headed. They who knew who their customers were. They knew who they wanted to sell. And they wanted to buy, and then we said, "This is easy work." And they said, "Does that mean your price goes down?" I says, "No." <laughs> guys up <laughs> it's, it's, it's the reason why we said yes because we do like to get checks but the reason why we said yes is because i'm not going to struggle yeah. right to try to t chase you around trying to tell you what to do if you would innately don't understand who you're solving for what and to what benefit and to whom if you don't know that and you really want to know that that's great if you just want to raise money or sell some more stuff have a nice day. Yeah. Take your business to 34th Street. So that's how we do it. And we we do grants matchmaking. Uh, we granted $4 million and 100 million tokens to XPRIZE Foundation and Peter DiMondes. We're building tools to decentralize one of the best kept secrets in the world, XPRIZE Foundation, that, you know, leverages, you know, 
reasonably large sums of money, 10 and 100 X's them to create stuff like, you know, private space travel or cleaning up the carbon in the world or stopping forest fires or, you know, audacious shifting. And we'll continue to grant money and allocate to those through our grant matchmaking organization. So those are the fun things we get to do. That's very cool. And I do like the fact is that if it looks like a struggle, you're going to have to force things. It's not going to work because it's always going to be a struggle. Um, and I do really like that. I, it took me 50 years to learn about this. I'm not going to struggle anymore. I'm just going to let it flow and keep stepping into the river. And we're going to be swimming downstream, not upstream. Yeah. I watched the uh, the Nike show about Michael Jordan. I yeah, love that. very cool. Have- and that your shoe means nothing until my son steps in it. Yeah. Uh, and, and it was beautiful. And people that live within their DNA, uh, it's just wonderful to work with. It was such yeah. a dream working with Microsoft and eBay, Mission Driven. I have an investment of mine. Dean Nelson is an amazing warrior, uh, an impact warrior. And he's created, you know, ne- carbon negative compute with Cato, one of my investments. He's a huge mentor and a friend. Uh, I, I'm, uh, I bow down to a guy named Will Poole, who is my client 100 times over at Microsoft. He was running something called Windows and reporting to Ballmer and Gates. Yep. And I'm happy to be an investor in his, in his fund called Capri and Unitas that only funds um, underprivileged entrepreneurs in foreign countries because we got enough money in the U.S., and he's an amazing impact warrior, the first guy to wrote the Segway to work back when they called it a ginger. Uh, and, you know, my mentors are few and far in between, but they're people that really live in and with their purpose. And I, uh, another another person I learned a lot from was, was Richard Condon. Uh, he was the leader of something called uh, Landmark Forum, which is a little bit of an odd organization, but, you know, he's a uh, ontological expert and he's helping uh, tribal associations in in um, uh, in Peru to get along with each other right. and you know, it brings me to some of the other stuff I do in decentralized medicine I've been a part of uh, driving a discipline uh, an adoption of something called Nagoya Protocol in a GOYA which originally founded in Gabon where the a neuro substance in medicine called iboga and ibogaine is created and w- we work in several areas in peru and in africa doing uh tribal reparation contracts and, and we're working with supply chain on the medicine we're working with supply chain on their on their creative things that they make the textiles and art yeah. and uh, that's uh you know and, and we're trying to leverage a lot of things in medicine that shortcut uh people's path towards a healed state whether it's a mental state which is epidemic or whether it's addiction or whether it's uh, uh neurological dysfunction or parkinson's these are things that are emerging through the merged essence of botanicals and and synthetic medicine yeah. synth- synthetic medicines so kind of deeply involved in that space also. Right. So you cover a lot of areas. Is there like, if you're talking to organization, how do you identify what are the priorities? Because you can't do it all. Is it, in terms of, is there a priority list of impact areas that you focus on or or is that dependent upon the organization's target audience and category? We, we score them. We're balanced scorecard freaks. Um, I could flash a couple at you if you'd right. like, or I can see some links, but, uh, you know, the, the spike index, the spider intelligence index, which drove restructuring of IT contracts for 20 years, totally billions and billions of dollars was all data-driven sourcing analytics. And so we do that. And we believe that there's a consensus building mechanism called data. That's super important. Uh, and even today in our matchmaking business, for grants to block from blockchains and large family foundations, uh, we score them based on, you know, leverage value, a brand value, impact value. You know, we drill down to the balance scorecard and try yep. to rationalize ourselves. So we don't 
believe in what people think. We believe in what we can prove. Okay. That sounds awesome. I'm going to take a deeper dive. If you could send some links through later, that would be good. We'll include them. That would be really cool. Um, because see, what you talk about is very, very rarely mentioned or discussed, which is, um, which I think is fantastic. Now, I know you've got a bit of, you, you got a uh, hard stop coming up. Just to wrap this up, I, I actually, I've been asking this question of my uh, guests and you can answer it if you like, or you can dance around it or give me a straight honest answer, which I'm sure you will, um, is what brings Tony joy? Deep. My essence. Well, first of all, there's this strawberry yeast sake that I'm very excited to open up at some point in time after I get rid of you. Uh, <laughs> so refined sake, which is the most nutritional uh, spirit in the world, it completes the amino acid food chain. So what's, uh, but, what's, the, what's the name of the sake? Uh, th this particular one is, you know, a bunch of Japanese on it, but uh, Amabuki Ichigo Junmai Gingo, and it's a, it's a Nama, which is unpasteurized, which means it only lasts about a month in the refrigerator. Uh, and it has a beautiful, amazing essence driven by a strawberry uh, fermentation process. But while I'm not much of a drinker, I do like to uh, play around with things of magnificence and purity in the Japanese. So I know how to do that really well. I do. Uh, what, what drives me value is to being of service to my brethren and to the powers that be. Mm -hmm. uh, love having the gift of applying disparate connections to create exponential value. Uh, the fact that I can merely put one person together with another, not as a connector, right? No. But at really machining an exponential value, right? Introducing people is nothing. You gotta look at how, how you look at people. You got people you know, people you've done business with. That's two different types. That's very binary. Oh, I know this guy, let me introduce this guy. No, there's a wonderful article I wrote called, uh, if I do say so myself, uh, Mastering Business Development by Tony Greenberg. And it kind of talks about how I see the world as a sales guy and how careful I am with each person. Like if I don't leave Jeff with something important here in this meeting and I've wasted your time, it's a mark against me. If I introduce somebody to somebody else on the auspices of doing business and they don't, that's a scar against me. If I refer somebody to fund a company that I don't know much about, and they decide not to have or have a bad conversation, that's a scar against me. So if we really want this spiralic function of betterment and value creation, we have to be very, very conscious about how you introduce people, how you connect the dots, and how you make those values and reverse them. So the article talks step-by-step step about how to really become a master of business development. Uh, and, uh, you know, like attorneys, uh, and like uh, accountants, uh, you know, they talk about their practice because uh, we're never perfect. Mm -hmm. And so my practice is my practice is getting better and being more of service. Uh, what is driving me is, um, you know, in life, you can either be a one to one person where you create value in that one person, like a mother to a child or one to few, which would be a company or create philosophies and distinctions that will allow mass people to adopt. So I'm hoping at this stage in my life that I can create something of massive value that allows people to, to measure their impact and right. be conscious of it and to stop hand waving and making things up and extra kit program is coming online in Q1. Yes, and we hope to prove out, uh, understand where they're headed with the impact that they're creating, be able to communicate to themselves, to their foundations, to their grantors, to their parents, to their kids. Uh, you know, it's interesting. One of our partners runs the largest family office distribution mechanism for philanthropy in the world by far. 
got about 600 employees. And he said, you know what? Your business is opposite of mine. He said, oh, my clients, the most biggest performance names in the world, uh, they don't want to be heard. They don't want to be bothered. They don't want to be known. Yep. Anonymous, to, you know, to dance like when no one's looking. Yes. So the the untold foundation of trillions of dollars that's unlocking in the world is not going to have Bill Gates' name on it. The things mm. that a Bill Gates does or that everybody else in the world, you see the top line stuff. But the stuff that are really impact, you'll never hear about it. Yeah. It's a tree falling in the forest. Yeah. And, and and finding the way to nourish yourselves in the earth and your brethren and your other companies and being a value to people, uh, that will not be something that you're running around with a management uh, menagerie impact certificate on. Mm -hmm. But it's a great start to be conscious. And as we head towards this beautiful thing called singularity, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, pioneered by uh, Ray Kurzweil, who I got to speak underneath at Harvard. Uh, what, you know, what we, when, when we look at all of the stuff that I learned from Ray 20 years ago, honestly, this AI, that's all I was ever talking about. The biggest problem with AI, in case any of anybody figured it out, and everyone talking about the evil this and the evil that, and the that, 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 it's the fact that once they're all working together, we all get the same answer. Yep. <laughs> That's the problem. Okay. We all got the same answer. Now, what are we going to do? How are we going to make a living? Right. <laughs> Worrying about the process of thinking is I sat there with a friend trying to create a poem the other day, and I'm way better at querying the AI engine than almost anyone. Right. Mm -hmm. I can get more stuff out of that thing. I can get a better poem. And people say, oh, is that Chat GPT? Uh, I'll tell you what, you go write a poem, you come back with your chat GPT poem, and I'll give you mine. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I'm the rapping Jew and I know just what to do is de bop a deep bop a scooby doo. So, <laughs> so learn how to query the chat and learning to apply it to the benefit of humanity is the most potent thing. And in the world where the answers become the same, that is the singularity where man meets machine, meets animal. And the transhuman humanitarians, uh, you know, have got some of these things right. Not everything goes perfect. Because as a matter of fact, when you create all this data and you upload your mind, well, guess what? You still got Comcast and Verizon. It's going to charge you a lot of damn money. So how to decentralize these telecoms. I have a wonderful company called Centropy. Uh, if you know anything about blockchain, it, it, it you know, blockchain, you, you know, with the Ethereum is, is gas uh, for transactions. Well, Centropy is gas for data. And everybody says, oh, data is big, we're better, you know, data, everything in the way that actually the data needs to be owned, owned by the human that created it, whether it's a healthcare, anonymous healthcare wallet, uh, which is being run by a portfolio company of mine called VATOM, V A T O M, or whether it's uh, Jeff from Radical Science, Jeff Chen, who's recreating the next generation, um, uh, uh, what do you call it, next generation clinical trial, uh, or whether it's Quantified Citizen. Uh, who's primarily invested by Paul Stamets, the the mushroom god that's actually doing uh, pre and post psychedelic, psychedelic and microdosing interventions on uh, physiological and cognitive and uh, uh, neurology exams on your phone. Any of these things are all focused on finding unique answers and creating unique value as they weave mm -hmm. together. So I'm super excited about all these people working on solutions that are the antagonistic view of one answer, the singularity itself. That's uh, absolutely fascinating. And uh, we um, just been reading a book called, uh, nearly finished it, called um, Here Lie Monsters, which is about the intersection of humanity and technology, which is uh, quite a different view. Um, and another book I've just started is called Precipice. So uh, we live in very, very interesting times where, you know, AI is starting to make its presence felt. And I've been working in technology since the PC revolution in the 80s. And um, I've enjoyed it for so much because it's just 
the evolution of humanity is happening at a rapid rate and sometimes it's our ability to handle that rapid rate becomes a challenge yeah it's all the same stuff we keep talking about the yeah. challenge is ai this ai that let me tell you something it's all the same crap it just keeps getting better and better and we got to get smarter and smarter and that's just what it all is and thank god we've got the most powerful human brains and the computer will never be as powerful as us yeah because we, we have a heart and well, we'll be able to emulate that and emulate compassion and empathy and all the things that make us human yep. uh it's at the end of the day it's going to be who we hug how we hug them and how they feel when we're done hugging them. Yeah, that is that is awesome. And it sounds to me like you are asking a lot of questions and asking the right questions. And it's about being more human in the world of technology that is rushing past us. So um, thank you, Tony, for trying to wrap humanity and into what we do as humans. Um, I think it's really important. So thank you very much for your antagonistic and very interesting insights that I've enjoyed immensely. And I'd love to one day have a sake with you and, and have a chat for more than 40 minutes. So thank you very much for your time. It's been an absolute pleasure, mate. Have a gorgeous day, my friend. All right. See ya. <laughs>